Uh, so in this video we're going to derive uh, the law of total probability. The law of total probability, which is a big, big title for what is in fact, as far as pure mathematics is concerned, a very, very simple statement to derive. It's effectively just a tautology. Um, but um, this this very simple statement to derive just from the axioms of probability spaces is actually extremely powerful uh, as far as applications concern, are concerned and as statistics is a branch of applied mathematics then that should be a good motivation. So we start off with our probability space which we know is a sample space uh, with a set of events and a probability measure attaching uh, a number between 0 and 1 to all of these events. Okay so if we take an event E then basically uh, what I'm going to, what the law of total probability is about is about breaking down the probability of E uh, into lots of little chunks. So basically it's about if you split your sample space up into lots of different events, so A1, A2, A3, so basically if you can form a partition of your entire sample space with events, so if uh, I can find I can find a partition, a partition of uh, my sample space omega uh, with uh, a i, which are elements of this set of events, curly f, and that's very important that they do need to be events uh, because we need to be able to ascribe a probability to each of these uh, a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, such that omega is cons is um, is equal to the disjoint union because they all have to be disjoint i is equal to 1 uh, to um, we'll do it to a finite number of pieces initially um, a i so it's equal to this union so basically you're splitting it up into a finite number of pieces you're splitting the sample space up into a finite number of disjoint sets so just like I've drawn there I split it into five pieces there and the whole sample space is covered by these and uh, their intersection if I intersect a i with a j then it's equal to the empty set if i is not equal to j so they are disjoint they are pairwise disjoint okay uh, then basically if I consider the probability of e it's going to be equal to the probability of e intersect a1, so we're going to get this bit here, plus the probability of e intersect a2, so we're going to get this bit, and we're using the second law of prob uh, the second axiom of a probability space here, uh, because all of these, if I inter because a1, a2, a3, a4, a5 are all disjoint, when I intersect them with e, the bit, the sets that I get, the e intersect AIs, these are all disjoint. The reason is because anything that's in E intersect AI is necessarily in AI. So if I intersect this with E intersect AJ, then uh, anything that's in here has to be in AI, and anything that's in here has to be in AJ. Uh, and nothing that's in AI can also be in EJ. E so all of these sets are pairwise disjoint, which means that uh, if I add up all these all these um, if I, basi I can basically write E as being equal to the union, uh, the disjoint union, I is equal to 1 to N of E intersect AI, and then basically what I'm just applying is the second axiom of probability to say that this is the sum, I is equal to 1 to N of the probability of E intersection AI. Uh, so if I finish this uh, statement, it would be E intersect A3 uh, plus E probability of E intersect A4. Uh, plus the probability of E intersect A5. So it's intuitive from the picture that I've drawn up there. Obviously some, for instance, if I intersect E with A5, there's nothing in there. Uh, so this will just be the empty set, so you'll just get zero, so you'll be adding on zero. That's not a problem for us. Um, so that's the intuitive picture of why we're doing this, and here's the rigorous proof of what we're doing. Uh, we're saying that E is equal to the, inter the disjoint union of E intersect AI, uh, because any point that's in E will necessarily be in at least one of the, well, will be in exactly one of the AIs. So when you do this intersection and unioning them all up, you will get every single point that was originally in E. 
Uh, so this is true. These are all disjoint because of this argument here. Therefore, I apply the second axiom of probability and note that I could, in fact, uh, there's nothing here stopping me from doing countably many of these. I could split it up into countably many. So I could let n go to countable infinity. Um, and this, uh, this step would still hold. Um, you'd uh, still be able to say that the probability of E is equal to the sum as uh, what well, would be the limit as n goes to infinity in this case. Um, so uh, this result would hold if you've got a partition made up of a countable number of um, events. Uh, so basically the probability of E intersect AI, and that's why I needed AI to be an element of the events. So I needed AI to be an element of F uh, so that E intersect AI was an element of F and so that I could take the probability of E intersect AI. So remember, in, I don't know when we did it, but in a few videos ago, um, we proved that, uh, when was when did we prove this? In fact, it might have been the, uh, in the video on conditional probability, I think, where we were trying to prove, yes, when we were trying to prove that uh, the restricted probability measure uh, was still a probability measure, uh, I showed you that uh, the axioms of a sigma algebra imply that if you take any two uh, elements of the sigma algebra and intersect them, you also get an element of the sigma algebra. So an intersection is within the sigma algebra. And just if you have forgotten that proof, I might just recap it because it's a very simple proof. If E1 and E2 are elements of the sigma algebra, then because of axiom 3 of sigma algebras, E1 union E2 was an element of the sigma algebra. And then by axiom 2 of the sigma algebra, uh, the complement of that is an element of the sigma algebra. But that, by basic axioms, uh, the mellow Franco axioms, is equal to E1 complement intersection E2 complement. Because this says everything that's in E1 and everything that's in E2, and then we're taking the complement of that, so everything that's not in E1 and not in E2. So everything that's not in E1 and everything that's not in E2. Oh, well, it has... To, sorry, no, that I said that wrong. Everything that's not in E1 and not in E2, so it's got to be both of them at the same time, is also an element of F, and because E1 and E2 are arbitrary sets in F, we could just replace that by A intersect B is an element of F if A and B are elements of F. Um, so that's where you get that from. Uh, so E intersection A1 is going to be an element of F, providing all the AIs are, are events, uh, therefore I can attach a probability to them, because the probability is defined on the set of F. So any F has a probability. Okay. Um, so uh, this statement then we'll now take. Uh, we now apply uh, the conditional probability rule. We know that the probability um, of uh, E given AI uh, is equal to the probability of E intersect AI divided by the probability of AI. And then basically what we do is we um, just mul bring this thing up here. So we multiply both sides by probability of AI. AI, and we get that the probability of E given AI times the probability of AI is equal to the probability of E intersection AI, and then basically we just stick this into this formula up here. Um, so uh, we get that the probability of E is equal to the sum, I is equal to 1 to N, of the probability of E intersection AI times the probability of AI. And that is the law of total probability there. It looks a rather terrifying statement, but as you can see, it's a very, very simple uh, derivation uh, for what we are saying. So this is the law of total probability. Probability. And basically, what it's saying, the intuitive version of what it's saying, is if we go back up to this picture up here, it's saying, t look at all these intersections then restrict yourself to this event. Consider this now the sample space. Find me what the restricted probability measure of this intersection is within this new smaller sample probability space rather. Um, and basically take that, which is this conditional probability here, the conditional probability of E given AI, and then you have to scale it back up. It's basically inverting it back up. It's saying, okay, we want to return what that probability of that intersection is to the lar into the larger space. And the way we do that is by multiplying by probability of AI. So all you're doing is basically summing all of that up and you'll get the probability of E back again. So that's the law of total probability.